Hi there, my name is Paul. On this video, I'll look at the play to earn economics. Uh, in particular, I'm going to focus or draw my thoughts uh, from a game called Town Star from Gala Games. Gala Games have a range of games being developed at the moment. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Play to earn economy is a very new thing, and I think a lot of people are trying to get their heads around well, how is this going to work, myself included? So I thought it'd be good to record this now anyway, so it's something to put on record and see how it pans out over the next few years. Uh, but it certainly is a really exciting area, this whole concept of people owning their digital assets. This is through the power of NFTs. So when you play a game like Town Star, which is a farming simulation, you can actually own items in there. If we uh, just come in here, let's see if we can get on OpenSea, which is the currently the biggest marketplace for NFTs. So discover, collect, and sell extraordinary NFTs. What I'm trying to do here is go to the Town Star uh, collection of NFTs. It looks like I'm going to struggle with that for the moment, so I might come back to that in just a moment. Um, but you can have NFTs such as um, storage, you can have wheat storage, you could have water supplies, all the sorts of things you need in a farm, but you would actually own those NFTs. Now, if we look at traditional gaming, the traditional gaming model for the last few years has been free to play and then have in-game app purchases. So what we're looking at here is the lifetime spending on in-game purchases for Fortnite, one of the biggest games online, according to Players United States, 2018 and 2020. The average spend by a player in a free-to-play game called Fortnite was $102. That was a lifetime spend, not in the year necessarily. Uh, I don't know, I couldn't find any statistics for how long people play Fortnite, but that is how much they are spending. So this, the, the spend has gone up from a couple of years earlier, $84. So Fortnite, the game developers there, are working out how to extract more money from those game players. What I did also notice that 77% of the people playing Fortnite, even though it's a free-to-play title, 77% are actually spending money in the game, the in-app purchases. Now, with the play-to-earn model, one of the things that uh, is really confusing is at the moment, you can make a lot of money in play-to-earn. You can play a game and they seem to be giving away huge amounts of money. Now, this is partly understandable because it's a new... Uh, sector. No one really knows how it's going to pan out. And what I want to run through a, a little bit later on this video is some calculations. I think that these numbers will come down, but it will still potentially be very worthwhile doing for people who get either uh, big investors who want to own the digital assets, which they can then lease out or rent out to other game players. That, I think, will be a huge development, something that Gala Games are very excited about themselves. Uh, by the way, if you want to actually play the Town Star and see some of these other games and, and keep up to date with Gala Games, uh, if you go to gogala.co.uk, that will take you through to the website. You can sign up there for free uh, and play Town Star for free as well. They have a weekly competition where you can actually win Gala Coin, which have real monetary value, or you can start playing in the Play to Earn. I've got other videos about that on the channel. Um, but yeah, what's, so what's the difference here between the free to play how are they able to pay out large sums of money? There are already, I know, quite a few people who play Town Star and earn a full time income. And this is a Western style income, so three or four thousand dollars a month uh, easily by playing Town Star. Now, how is that sustainable? There's a couple of things, first of all. Obviously, I say obviously, perhaps it's not obvious. Uh, Town Star is a free to play game at the moment, but they are saying. It's free in season one. We don't know yet whether they're going to charge for season two, quite what their modeling is. You know, that one thing that I did notice uh, in previous interviews with Eric Scheimer and Jason uh, Bitbender, Jason Brink, that is, um, and these are very high up directors. In fact, uh, Eric Scheimer is the founder of Gala Games and was the co founder of Zynga Games as well. They really understand the gaming market. So what they've got to work out is, well, how do we apply this for the play to earn sector? So in a traditional game, so in Fortnite, gamers spend money in game. All that money goes to the gaming company to develop it. So if they're spending $100 each on average, uh, and that was 77% of the players, so the average player is probably spending around $70 to $80 playing Fortnite, so even free players. 
uh, then that money all goes to the gaming company. Now, when you're talking NFTs, you can be talking much higher figures uh, in terms of actual monies. Let's have a quick look and see if we can get back in at OpenSea. This is not playing ball, it's a right pain. Um, but for instance, you could buy a wheat store in uh, the Townstar game, you would own that game, you would own that asset rather, and a wheat store would cost in the region of $1,300. Now, for a free-to-play player who's not used to NFT gaming, you if you've just heard that for the first time, you're thinking, why would you spend $1,300 buying a digital asset in the game? Well, one thing you need to remember is that you own that asset and you can sell it anytime you want on OpenSea, as long as OpenSea is working, which it's not at the moment for me just now. But you can go and sell that on OpenSea. So you could buy that asset, you could invest in that asset if you wanted to look at it in that terms, buy that asset, use it in your game, earn town coin with it in town start, and then if you decided you didn't want to keep that, perhaps you got bored with the game or something like that. And, and Gala are also very insistent on this. They are making games that people want to play. That is what Gala is all about. If they make a really good game that people want to play, then they're hoping the economics will look after themselves. And I think there's probably a good uh, amount of sense in that strategy. Uh, so if they make games that people do want to play, and by the way, with Townstar, it is a very addictive, fun game, uh, and I know several people that I've introduced to it, they just play it anyway, whether they're using it as play to earn, uh, it doesn't really matter. Now, another thing to point out there, actually, we're getting a whole new sector of people to play games. Uh, the people who play Fortnite uh, are not typically going to be big investors and things like that, they just play Fortnite. They spend hours and they're entertained and they love playing Fortnite and spend $100 a year or $50 a year, whatever the figure is per year, uh, playing Fortnite. But they're not necessarily investors. Now, once you start to get play to earn actually digital assets producing returns, then you're going to get a whole new group of people coming in um, who are investors and buying NFTs. And then they will rent those out, lease them out to game players. So it makes it affordable for the game players. Um, but where does the revenue still come from in that? Well, first of all, when Gala Games create the NFT, they sell those. So if we go to the store here, for instance, uh, we can come in here and we can look at Townstar NFTs. And let's just search by popularity as well. And when they make these NFTs, their designers produce the NFTs and they go and sell them through their store here and they basically can determine what price they want to sell them for. So we've got a rare wheat stand here at the moment at 19,849 town coin. Uh, town coin count is about 20 cents, so 19,849 uh, town coin by 20 cents is $4,000. $4,000 for a rare wheat stand. Uh, but you own that wheat stand, you can hold on to it for as long or as short a time as you want, earn from it during your game, uh, and then go and sell that back on the open market. So that's one way that Gala Games make their money is by producing the NFT. So that effectively could pay for the development of games, uh, all the staffing costs, the administration, all the overheads. They could just make NFTs and sell them. Now, if they've got a really good game, they're always going to have more and more people wanting NFTs. So they're going to be creating new NFTs for the game, developing the games. Um, there was a game I looked at the other day, and it's been around... It was Grand Theft Auto. It's been around since 1997. It's 25 stroke 26 years old. Games, when they're good, will stick around for a really long time. This is not about producing a crazy, stupid little game that people play. Um, you know, the um, what was that game where you had the bird flapping up and down? Flappy Bird. <laughs> that was really popular for about six months, and that was it. Uh, this is not what Gala Games are about. Gala Games want games that will be played for years and will become massive franchises. So they're going to be constantly producing NFTs. So that's one way of generating an income which they can then pay for all their development um, and replace, which was the traditional free-to-play market like Fortnite, where they've got to stump up the initial development costs and then hope they can get it back if they can sell enough in-app purchases. And if you get a blockbuster game, yes, you can. You can make a fortune and creators of Fortnite and other gaming companies are worth a lot of money. But where's the second way 
uh, that you can make money with uh, if you were the company running this, if you were Gala Games, how else could you make money? Well, one of the beauties of NFTs is that you can set a lifetime royalty figure on the sale of those NFTs. Now, at the moment, Gala Games has set that at 2.5%. So every time a rare wheat stand sells, for example, uh, Gala Games will make 2.5% every time that sells forever. So of the 19,849 times by 0.25, uh, that would give you 500 town coin every time that sells at the 19,000 town coin price. Um, and that is set in the NFT. So even though Gala Games don't own that NFT anymore at that point, they're still getting a royalty every time that sells. So that could be something that they could certainly build into the game to encourage people to trade the NFTs uh, and sell those and so on. But we've still got this problem. Having spoken all around this, we've still got this problem. At the end of the day, you can't pay out more than you take in. Now I've said I think it's feasible that Gala Games will make enough money from simply creating the games in the first place and selling the NFTs. But how are they going to pay out for people on the play to earn I don't think we're going to get anywhere near the sort of levels of play to earn rewards that we're seeing at the moment. So now is the time to certainly make hay while the sun shines, get involved with the play to earn sector, make incredible returns. Um, for a wheat store, for instance, um, you get 11 town coin per day. Let me get a calculator up. So if you're getting 11 town coin per day, Town coin at the moment is 20 cents, so that's $2.20 for a wheat store. And the wheat store, like I've said, costs about $1,300. So if you spent $1,300 on a wheat store, divide that by $2.2 per day, 590 days, it would have paid for itself. Now that may not seem very attractive, but if you compare that to other assets, if you compare that with the stock market, or you compare that with real estate, that is a phenomenal return. So I think either the price of the NFTs is going to continue to rise because as bigger investors come in saying, well, hang on, at 590 days, you're talking a return of about half a percent per day, so 15% a month, which is a phenomenal return. You know, in the stock market, if you get 15% in a year, you're doing incredibly well because that's what Warren Buffett, one of the richest people on the planet, has managed to achieve. But if you're getting 15% a month, then that is absolutely huge. So I think there's going to be a lot of money flow into these assets. These are new digital assets. People will start to get used to them and say, right, well, which ones are the assets that give us the best returns? Now, they are going to fall, but they will plateau at a certain point. This is my prediction. I'm, I can't, I'm not saying this with total confidence, but this is my prediction is that at the moment people are saying these are really expensive, but that's because they haven't really worked out. These are not investors that are looking at these. These are game players and saying $1,300 to buy a wheat store. Why would I spend that sort of money? Um, and it's because of those two factors there. You, you don't have to hold on to that wheat store and it does at the moment earn you town coin every day within Gala Games and as a return if you're an investor it gives you phenomenal returns. So I think more and more people will be buying these NFTs over time. The price of those will keep on rising. That will also generate more and more sales of the NFTs which means that Gala Games will keep generating a revenue uh, and so they might be able to keep on paying a fairly reasonable return. But I think if we get to the point where you could make uh, 3% a month rather than 3% every two days or 3% every six days, 3% uh, a month would still be a fantastic return. Uh, so I'm not going to run through the calculations of what they might be. I'll, I'll leave you to do that yourself. But uh, I want to cut this video short now um, because I think I've given enough of my own thoughts on where these NFTs and the whole play to earn gaming economics uh, might move. Uh, that said, who knows what other developers are working on, some really smart ideas that are coming through. But fundamentally, uh, the, f the real point is you cannot pay out more than you take in. And it's the player economy, it's the, it's the money that's spent by the players and in this case now investors by people buying 
assets, digital assets, where they don't even necessarily want to play the game, uh, but they want to buy the digital assets, that's where it can make a lot of money for Gala Games. I think we'll still end up in the same situation where a handful of people will make fortunes. I'm absolutely convinced on that. We're already seeing that as it stands now. Even if the returns drop considerably from now, they are still far, far better than stock market, real estate, and many other forms of asset investing. Um, and so it will attract a massive sector uh, of money uh, that's not currently in the gaming sector. They may invest in gaming companies on the stock market, but to actually own the assets within games that are leased out and rented and borrowed by people, then I see that still as a huge, huge growth area. I'd love to know what your thoughts and comments are. Um, this is just to get the grey cells working, to give some ideas. Uh, but let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. I'd love to see them. I'll try and respond back to as many as I can. But again, quick reminder, if you want to play Gala Games, go to gogala.co.uk. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about NFT gaming collections, uh, putting your money to work for you, uh, low cost investments with potentially very high yield returns, uh, that's what my channel is all about, putting your money to work. Uh, so do subscribe to the channel if that's of interest to you. And I will hopefully see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.